نؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا فمن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات عليه والسلام عليه والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته Dear Muslims, my topic this evening is titled Building a Strong Muslim Family Inside a Western Society. The very title itself seems to be a little controversial and contradictory. Because when we think of Islam and its morals and its values and the principles in which the religion is built upon, we find that many of the cultural norms that are exemplified in the Western society are diametrically opposed or against many of the principles of Islam. So this is a very, not only important, but a very sensitive topic. Because we are Muslims, and we have families, and it goes without being said that we are living in the Western Hemisphere. So tonight, inshallah, I'm going to try to share with you how you can build and maintain a strong Muslim family in America. But when you build a family, there are steps that we take just like building a foundation. And the first brick that we lay is dua. We supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah has mentioned in the Quran بقوله تعالى والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا ومن ذرياتنا this is the first step that we take in laying the foundation for a strong Muslim family. For those who say, Our Lord, bestow upon us wives, spouses, and offsprings that will make our hearts rejoice or they will be the apple of our eyes. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us righteous children and make them lil mutaqina imama for those people who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts make our progeny be those who guide them to Islam. So this is the first step when we think about establishing a family is to call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his assistance. Most people think of a family in the simple terms of a man a woman and a child. But when we think about building the Muslim family, we have to be more inclusive and we have to think in terms of a community, a nation, as well as a global village. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, بِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى 
يا ايها الناس انا خلقناكم من ذكر وانثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا ان اكرمكم عند الله اتقاكم O humanity, I have created you from male and female, and I've caused you to evolve into nations and tribes so that you may acquaint yourself with one another, so that you may familiarize and cooperate with one another. So the Muslim family exceeds just a simple man, woman, and child. And I want to share with you in the next slide about building the foundation. And I use the example of a young man on the right who's contemplating taking the journey of marriage, establishing a family. And I use the example of an engineer, a person who's about to undertake the construction of a huge, humongous, gigantic building. And this is just like marriage. We should not, as Muslims, take the institution of marriage as something light. We should take it serious. Before you put the building on the surface, you have to, number one, dig deep. That's the first thing you do, you dig deep. And that digging deep, brothers and sisters, is preparing yourselves, preparing yourselves for marriage. First, physically, you wanna make sure that you are exempt from any type of hazardous or harmful habits. Drugs, alcohol, you know, bad health, eating dietary regulations, because these things can trickle down and affect your offspring. What you have in your bloodstream, your DNA, your RNA, your genetics can be transmitted to your children. So you wanna make sure that you remove yourself from the harmful elements that may impair your children and also your spouses. Spiritually, you need to understand how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designed the criteria for a Muslim man and a Muslim woman and a Muslim child to regulate their lives in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of our beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And financially, you want to make sure that you have the means to sustain a family. And lastly, this digging deep is to be emotionally stable. Putting yourself in a position to be able to enter into critical and constructive dialogue with your spouse in times of anxiety and times of stress without blowing the coop, without becoming too angry where you begin to abuse one another. So we have to mandate anger management upon ourselves. So we have to prepare ourselves emotionally. And this solid ground that I'm speaking of because once you dig deep, you go through the soft clay and when you get to solid ground, and that is you look for a good Muslim family, a good Muslim family. And also a balanced community where you can raise and nurture and develop your family. And after you have found the solid ground, you want to actually solidify that even stronger, and that's the cement. And the cement is the compatibility. Brothers and sisters, 
It's very important that you find a spouse that is compatible. You should have some things, at least four out of six things in common. If you have a person of a religious nature who loves huwa mu'allaq bil hadith or Qur'an or masjid, he's connected to the, 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 the study of hadith or the Qur'an or the masjid, and he spent countless hours away from the house or in the books. And if you are not someone who understands his spiritual level, then you may think that he's depriving you of quality time. If you have someone who's a businessman, who's really, really chasing the dunya for the permission, by the permission and the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala, and you, you cannot understand the 15 hours in the store or driving the taxi or traveling back and forth or doing business outside of the country, then you have to rethink marrying someone of that nature. So we have to find at least four out of six things that we are compatible with and that helps the marriage because we can make the adjustments. But when you find yourself in a relationship whether you have nothing in common because the Baba or Mama did not evaluate the individual, you find yourself in a very unhappy relationship. And I'm sure we have seen this happen time after time. And then we have the Hadid or the still, that which fortifies a marriage, which makes this marriage, you know, the, the, the unbreakable you know, the everlasting, endurable marriage, and that's the still. And that is ta'awun ala al-birri wa taqwa. That is that we should be able to cooperate with our spouses. That everyone in the family has a voice, has something to add, has a comment that we have to open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to the entire family. And that is what makes a marriage last. Ihtiram, respect, honesty and integrity and fairness, being fair. And this is the structure that we need to embody all of this. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the example of Abina Ibrahim alayhi salam, inna Ibrahim kana i ummatan qanitan lillah, hanifan wa lam yaku minal mushrikeen. Ibrahim was an embodiment. He had all the principles and characteristics to unfold in an ummah. So if you are a son now, you have to have the capacity and the ability to become a father. If you're a daughter now, you have to have the capacity and the ability to become a mother. And if you're a male, you have to have the ability and the capacity to become a son or a female or daughter. You have to find your respected role in the family unit. But there are some major challenges. for the Muslim family in the Western society. Some major challenges. You know, we're not living in Mecca or, you know, some of the better Muslim societies where the behavior and the culture uh, uh, prevents, you know, the, the, the corruption. You know, in America, we have 12,000 12, murders a year that is reported people are being charged 12,000 if you do the math that means a thousand people are being killed unjustly murdered in the streets of America every month this is the environment that we live in America houses over two million inmates in state and federal institutions 
because they have chosen the life of crime. We have about 2.22 and a half million Americans from the ages of 12 on up who are using drugs or have used drugs. And many of them have addictions. And you know, as Muslims, sometimes we act as though we're talking about the other people. But we are not immune to the social ills of this society. We have about 90,000 reported rape cases annually in this year, and only 23% of the rape cases are reported, and about six out of every 10 college students have been sexually harassed on attempt rape or rape themselves. And even today, America has registered about 86,000 same-sex marriages. And I'm saying this because we have to understand the society that we live in and how to prepare and fortify ourselves as Muslims if we in fact have the nia, the intentions of establishing a family. Now, there are five major mistakes that we make in choosing spouses. And one of them is long-term courtship and dating. We see a nice brother, we see a nice sister, and we want it to happen. And we compromise the Islamic principles. You know, the first sitting, we have a, a mahram there, we have the uncle, the brother, we invite the brother over, the family meet the second time, the third time there's no uncle, brother. Oh, go to the movies. Uh, I'm not ready yet, let's, let's prolong this about six months. I have a career ahead of myself. So this long-term dating continues and continues until something bad can happen. Something bad can happen and then we want to blame the children but we have given them the, the playing field. We have given them the range to allow the shaitan to enter in as the third party. كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا ألا يخلون رجل وامرأة إلا كان ثلاثهما الشيطان. As the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that there is no seclusion of a male and a female except that the shaitan is the third. And a lot of times, you know, we think that this seclusion is just inside of a box room. But sometimes we find ourselves on the university settings where we have the liberal student study group. And being in a situation where there's no Muslims to see you, you may be the only Muslim in that group, or you may be away from your family or relatives that can inform your family of ill behavior. That's like seclusion because he or she, they are at liberty to act and say as they feel. So we have to be very careful as we make this mistake with our daughters. And brothers, please try to be specific and precise. You know, if you don't have the means, if you're not ready to get married, do not play with the sisters. Do not have them hanging on. Oh, when I finish my medical degree, I will marry you. This is like seven years down the road. You see? And sisters do not have brothers hanging on. You know, I want to finish my medical degree and seven years down the road because we put a hardship on one another. When you're ready to get married, then you pursue it in the proper manner. That is one of the mistakes. The second mistake, as I mentioned, is allowing our daughters to go away to college. This is a big problem among the Muslims. 
especially from the region I'm in. I'm in the region of New York, New Jersey. It's, it's heavily congested with Muslims. And I find we have universities. We have universities in our environment. You know, higher schools of learning. But for some reason, they want to go to Colorado and study. They want to go to LA and study. They want to go to Atlanta, Georgia and study. They want to get away from the sight of their parents. And this is a danger. You can be good. You can be sincere. But once you get in that collegiate environment, when you find that you are the only one playing by the rules, you begin to feel like an oddball. And sh slowly but surely, the anvil or the hammer begin to chip away your morality, the, your value system, the integrity, and the honor which was bestowed upon you by your parents. So it's a danger. Try to find universities that are close by. Brothers, try to attend the same universities as your sister if you have to travel. Oh, I don't want my brother around me. He's a pest. He's a knucklehead. How many times we hear that? You know, I don't want my sister around me. She talks too much. She tell everything I do. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to protect one another. You're supposed to reinforce one another. This is a good thing. You should have a healthy relationship. And that the Prophet ﷺ, he said that a woman should not be in seclusion or in isolation except that she have her mahram. That she be accompanied by someone, a guardian, that can look after her. And the next major mistake we make, and everyone may be familiar with this, is called the green card marriage. You know? You know, you, 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 you just want to marry just to, you know, go to America or go to uh, England. I don't care what she look like. I don't care if she have hijab. We'll work on that later. Or if he want me to put on the hijab, I will put on the hijab and I will go anywhere he want me to go. This is not a good thing. This is not a good thing. But you know, sometimes we have some good, good re results of that. But see, in Islam, we don't gamble. We don't take chances. We like to look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us as a nasiha, as, as, as a command, as hidayah, as guidance. You see? We don't want to marry just for a green card. You even have people paying people to marry for green cards. Brother, I want you to marry my daughter where she's in Pakistan or she's in uh, uh, France or uh, wherever. And I'll give you so much money. Don't worry about the mahra. I, I'll take care of that. And it ends in calamity. Because we must realize, brothers and sisters, that when you marry, you are in the position, the legal position to bring into the world a child. And a child needs to come into the world with the blessings of their parents. This is, this is done for, for the goodwill of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you want to add another Muslim to the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You don't want to play games because this is amal khair. This is something that will be added to your scale on the yom al qiyamah. But if you play with this, then the shaitan, he loves to play. The shaitan, he loves to play. And we don't want, you don't want to play with the shaitan. The Prophet said a woman is married for four reasons. I don't think the green card is going to be in this. Okay? Okay? He said, Li maliha, for her wealth. Li jamaliha, for her beauty. Li hasabiha, for her nobility and her lineage. Walidiniha, and for her religion. Did you hear green card? I don't think so. Okay? But he said what? First part of that he deen. Grab the one that has deen. Grab the one that has deen. It, that means a person, it doesn't mean that, that they don't live in the world, but it means they know their limitations. They know how far to go. They know their place in the family of humanity. And the prophet says, Tarabat yadak, then you will not regret or you will prosper. So, we should not make this mistake of marrying just for a green card. 
And the next one is something that every person that owns any type of electronic device, and that is the internet dating. You know, we think that because he's about 3,000 miles away or uh, 500 miles away, that the shaitan cannot intervene. But look at, look at this. You're on the internet. There's no supervision. You got the Skype. You're talking. You're discussing issues. And there's no wali. There's no engagement. Your Facebook page is, is cluttered. People are taking the Twitter, cutting and pacing, and they are creating a scandal of you. And you may have innocent in intentions. I mean, this is why we have to be very careful with ourselves as we come into gatherings, that the people respect the, 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 the personality of the people, that we should not be taking the pictures of our sisters and our brothers and, 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 and making it rampant in the internet. This is the girl that I'm, I want to marry. Looky here. This is the brother that I, I met at the conference. Looky here. And this stuff is going crazy. This, this is eroding the moral fiber that keep the Muslims together. And we wonder why, when we get into the relationship, that we cannot maintain the integrity and dignity of Islam. Why? Because everyone but the husband knows your business. Everyone but the wife knows your business. You see? And we have to be very careful with the internet. The internet is a tool that can be used for benefit but it's also a tool that can be used to defame you, to corrupt the innocence that you may have as a person. And this one here is the fifth one. <laughs> you know, living in this country, I've seen a lot. I heard a lot, you know, and I, I wish I had, would have not seen it, and I wish I would not have heard it. You know, the things that people will do and you know, the, besides the green card marriage, uh, actually that's supposed to be uh, marrying a, a, a non-believer. Marrying a disbeliever. And you know, we have the excuse, you know, we have the excuse that, well, this country is a Christian country. They're the people of the book and they are permissible. And we don't look at the, the conditions. We don't, look at, we don't go to the scholars of the imma. We don't study the fiqh of the situation. And we find ourselves, especially we know that there's a condition that the Muslimah cannot marry a non-Muslim under no conditions illa yu'min, except that he become a believer. But we have the situation where the Muslim men for whatever reasons, you know, chooses a non-Muslim over a Muslim. This happens, you know, because for some reason they don't have the discipline themselves to be a good Muslim, so the non-Muslim cannot critique them. And we have a lot of good Muslim sisters who need good husbands. We have a lot of good Muslims and they are waiting on the right person. How do you think your Muslim sister feel when you pass her over and you marry a non-believer? Not someone who is inclining for it towards Islam or making some sadaqa or some benefit because She's attractive. It's the American way. There's a lot of benefit in it. And this happens. And Allah Ta'ala tells us that we should not marry the, the, the pagan woman until she believe. And when we talk about this society in America, it is almost freedom from religion. You know, there's people who are Christian because they heard that that's what you're supposed to be if you were born in America. And they only practice it twice a year, uh, December the 25th and on Easter. 
And that's all they know about it. And they have nothing in their lives that reflect the life of Christianity as a, as a life of, of belief, a life of humility, muhsanat, righteousness, and so forth and so on. They live just like the women of Jahiliyyah. And they go throughout the, through the world half clothed, you know. So we have to be very careful with this mistake. And there are some situations where we have had Muslim women to marry non-Muslim men and have raised families and, and they come to and fro the masjid as though it's okay. Yeah, I know I married him, mashallah, Allah would take care of this on Qiyamah. And this is a disrespect, this is a slap in the face. You know, and you have beautiful Muslims who are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who wants to add to the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the type of classes that we need to discuss over and over until we get it right, brothers and sisters. And again, you know, in a nutshell, uh, the five major mistakes is long-term dating, uh, sending our daughters off to college, internet dating, green card marriages, and marrying non-believers. But you know, there's always a positive side. And the positive side is, as I mentioned earlier, the five healthy steps. The first one is looking for a good Muslim family. Look for a good Muslim family, and you should First, focus on the masajids, the people of, of, of taqwa, you know. Oh, this brother, he made his hajj, he's at the masjid, he's at the mu'tamara, he's, he's, he's working in the da'wah, you know, he's, he, he's, he's saving his wealth, he's not, he doesn't have uh, uh, to buy uh, a pair of Nikes every week. <laughs> you know, he can find a way to stay warm without having on a North Face jacket, you know. You know, he can get to and fro without driving a BMW. And there's nothing wrong with having that if you are able to maintain your responsibility towards your family. But when you choose to invest in dunya at the expense of your family, then you are counterproductive. And you need to stay away from these type of people. So as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that she has character, she has integrity, she comes from a good family. And just imagine, and this is what my father told me when I was intending to get married. He said, son, do not just look for a wife for yourself. He said, but consider also her being a mother. Because a marriage may not be forever, it may be dissolved. But at least she would have or he would have good parents that even if the marriage does not work between the two people, and Allah knows best, but at least that child will have good parents. So you have to consider all of that. So look for a good family, good grandparents, you know, in-laws, you know, and, and you know, this is the most difficult thing to have, you know, loving in-laws, you know. But we need to find that, and if we create a relationship prior to marriage, we should not just, now you're going to be my friend because I'm going to marry into your family. No. You know, you see the brothers come to the masjid and he come from another city and he gets to know the people and say, oh, I want to get married. You're like, where do you come from? <laughs> There's no sisters there and then the brothers from this community go to that community. So you need to know the families inside of the community as we saw how the companions did as the Prophet Sallallahu married the daughter of uh, Umar and, 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 and Uthman Radha Ta'ala Anhum Jami'an married the two daughters of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Prophet married the daughter of Abu Bakr etc. As you see, they created a not only a religious connection but also a, 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 a social and family bond. So they felt one another because they shared in the pool of grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We need that effect in our community today. So we have to look for good families. And the next step is, brothers and sisters, and I say this to the brothers, talk to the Wali. You know, sisters kind of take the back seat for a minute. Because, you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the rijal qawamun ala nisa. We are the protectors and maintainers of the sisters. You know, because it's something in men that they can 
understand the intentions of another man. You see, because when you go directly to the brother and you want to talk to the brother, he's in his best behavior, he have on his nice thobe, he have on his itra, probably wearing ud, you know, from Mecca, etc., and he's speaking the kalam, you know, and every other statement he's saying, alhamdulillah, wa subhanallah, etc. So now you're caught up in the, in the hype, you know, but how does this brother treat other people in your absence? How does this person treat his family? How is his social network with the ikhwa in the community? These things are very important. So this is why the, the wali has a very important role in making sure that there's all the defects, if there are any, that are manifest, has to be checked. How can you allow your sister or your mother or your daughter to marry a brother who's been abusive, even in his family. A person who is not kind to his aunt, that is not kind to his mother or his sister, what makes you think he's gonna be kind to his wife? You have to have a deep sensitivity for the feminine gender. You know, how you treat children. If a person is not kind to his little brothers and his little sisters, if he's beating the little kids in the masjid over the head, you know, what makes you think he's going to be kind to your grandchildren if they come from his loins? So we have to think about these things as well. So the wali has to be a part of that. And the next thing is have some savings. As I mentioned, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you the caretakers and maintainers over the, over the female because you spend, you spend upon them, you see? And this is a, 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 a darajah or a rank that Allah has given you, not because that you are more, better than her, but this is because you make sure that the needs are taken care of. And we know that the, the nature of male and female, you know, mandates that the male has to take the forefront in maintaining the family because of children, pregnancies, things of this nature. So have some savings. Do not walk in and say, I want to get married and I want to move in with you and can you give me a job, Baba, and etc. No. Show the person that you have, you know, honor, you have integrity, and so forth and so on. And the next one is when you get married. You know, Allah Ta'ala tells us, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَادَةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Allah Ta'ala tells us that from His signs is that He created from you, your spouses. Meaning that the female component is not some alien of a foreign species. She has come from you. Okay? And that you may live and find peace and tranquility and goodwill with her. The home of the, of the married couple should be a place of serenity. When you leave the, the job, you know, when you leave uh, the, 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 the troubling, disturbing affairs in the world, when you come home to your house, to your abode, you should enter in a, uh, uh, this is, should be something uh, of like Sakina. It should be something of tranquility. And make their, their dwellings comfortable, you know? You know, you don't have to have uh, uh, a, a, a Trump Tower plush apartment, but at least make sure that when they sleep, they can get up without their backs aching. That they have hot water to take bath, they have uh, 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 utensils to cook, they have adequate clothing that they can enter into the society with, with dignity, you see? We should not shame our wives. We should make them hold their heads up to be a Muslim, you see? And this is something that we should do. We should not you know, minimize because we're reading about the hardships of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and what the companions faced, but their spouses was also faced with those hardships. And this was a condition that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala put upon them as a test. But you may not be tested with that condition, so you don't have to, to be cheap and go back and, and say, well, this is the Prophet only had two pieces of furniture in his house. You know, we're okay, no. This is not acceptable. We should actually, you know, you know, correspond and dialogue with our spouses and so forth and so on. And the, 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 the last thing in the healthy steps is give her her rights. You know, be, 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 be beneath the beautiful covering that protects her from the, the evil eye, the lustful eye. 
you know, the, 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 the maverick soul of, 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 of a wayward person. There's a human being inside of that garb with feelings and emotions, you know what I'm saying? And she has rights similar to those that we have, okay? And allow them to be involved in the community, you know, to do things, to volunteer their expertise, their services, to be involved. This is a beautiful affair here where I see the brothers and I see the sisters. I see family. You know, this is the balance, you see? And this is something that we should look for. And in closing, as I mentioned, uh, you have to find a balanced community. Uh, you have to find uh, a, a, a way that you will develop positive growth, and that is praying with your children, fathers spending time with your sons, trusting one another, and sharing the responsibility. And lastly, find a community that is balanced the middle way. Okay, Umatan Wasata, where they have, based on the, 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 the foundation of La ilaha Muhammad Rasulullah, a community that is Muslim friendly, it doesn't matter what ethnicity you are, what country you come from, you're embraced in that community so that we don't be uh, uh, ostracized with racism, and a community that, 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 that champions education for the children, have youth career programs for sisters, and so forth, and volunteer your time. And I'm out of time, mashallah. Maybe the next time I come back, I will have more time to talk about the elements of building a strong Muslim family. And I thank you, and I thank the brothers, the Somalian community, for having me to share my time with you. With jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.